What's up everybody? It's Classical Chris back again with another magical musical moment. Today's lesson, we're going to talk about doing hammer-ons, the opposite of pull-offs. So with a hammer-on, we're going to be going from a lower note to a higher note. Let's get started. Here's what we can do with the hammer-on. It allows us to play more what's called legato or smoothly. So instead of having to play each note, it kind of allows us to kind of slur, if you will, into the next note. The technical word for hammer-ons and pull-offs is the word slur. So what we do is we kind of go into the next note like that. It's a little smoother than having to go it's just a little bit smoother. It's like if you were singing and you went da da instead of da, that kind of thing. It's just a little bit of a smoother kind of feel to the to the music. And with that, you also get to play. You can play a lot faster because you don't have to use your right hand as much. So you can do a little bit more with the left hand, and it helps you to move a little bit quicker, and it makes the overall sound a little bit smoother than just picking each note. So with a proper uh, hammer on, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that when we hammer on to the note, whatever note it happens to be, that we want to try to hammer on to the tip of the finger as best as possible. It's easy when you're isolating it in an exercise just to go like this, like that, and if you notice, you know, my finger, it's really nowhere near the tip of the finger. In fact, it, it pressed down like right there on the pad of the finger. And yeah, I got the sound, but in the context of a piece of music, it's not going to work. Because if, I, if I'm playing a piece of music and I go like this, well, I technically hammer onto that note, but I also got two others with it. <laughs> so it's really not a, a good hammer on at all. So what I want to do is I want to hammer on with the tip of the finger so I get just the one note that I want to do. So. How can we do this? How can we work on this exercise or work on this technique isolated? Well, what we can do is we can take a, you know, a single string and just start working on hammering on. And with a proper hammer on, just like with the opposite of the pull off, all I'm doing is I'm moving from the knuckle base, the base of my knuckles right here. When I do the hammer on, I don't go like this and use my shoulder or my back or my arms or my neck or anything like that. I'm not trying to do that. I mean, I could do that, but you know, I mean, but it's more for showmanship if I kind of like do a that kind of thing, but then it kind of looks a little weird when you're playing classical guitar to do that. So I kind of want to be a little bit more precise about things. If we were like, you know, in a rock band or something like that, then it would look really cool, you know, because, you know, you get the, all that distortion and those big monster Marshall stacks and everything like that. But for us, we're in a concert hall playing the classical guitar, so we already only look so cool. <laughs> so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're moving just that knuckle base and hammering on to the tip of the finger. If you look at your finger, you'll see that there's a little bit of an indention there. Don't worry if it's not perfectly like perpendicular with your finger. There are times when that has to happen. Other times when you're on these higher strings and doing this sort of thing, it's going to be a little bit more at an angle because your hand's more at an angle. Up here is a little bit more straightened and rounded off because you're on the lower strings. So you're going to get a more rounded look to it. So, but when properly uh, hammering on, whatever we happen to do, yeah, the other fingers move a little bit because they're all connected to each other, but what we're doing is we're really hammering on and slamming that finger onto the string. One of the things that I've noticed that beginners do at first is they try to put their finger on the string and then press into it. But that doesn't make any sense because you stop the sound and then you try to create something out of nothing, really. So what you want to do is really just pretend like you want to put your finger 
through the neck of the guitar. And I promise you, no matter how strong you are, whether you are a little guy or you have muscles like Arnold, you know, and you're sitting there like, I'm going to put my finger through this, it's not going to happen. It's going to be a perfect sound. It's going to be a really good sound. If you've got a really nice guitar like this, you're going to get a whole lot of overtones too. So, and you want to make sure that you're hammering on to, again, to the tip of the finger. So, the weakest finger that we have when we're first starting out is that pinky finger. So what I would suggest is doing some exercises that are going to make you use that pinky finger more than some of the other fingers. Hammering on from the first finger to the second finger is easy. They're stronger, they're more independent. Two to three, fingers two to three, that's pretty easy too, they're strong fingers. Three to four, that's a little bit, that's a little bit different. a little bit tougher because we really need to make sure that that pinky finger is nice and strong. I would suggest not just hammering on to the from the third to the fourth finger, but work on the second to the fourth finger. Like that. A little whole step action. And then maybe a minor third for the first to the fourth finger. And I would suggest doing that up the neck and down the neck, because you don't want to always just be all the way down here and doing that and stretching, but you also want to get used to kind of keeping the hand in the more neutral position. Because up here at the ninth fret where I am, or the ninth position where my first finger is, really that's kind of the first fret, unless you have huge hands. It's the ninth or the eighth fret where your hand, when your hand is totally relaxed and you're not you're not expanding it or constricting it at all, that you really have one finger per fret. If I'm up here on the ninth fret with it with totally relaxing, I've got one finger on each fret. If I keep my hand totally relaxed and move all the way back, look what happens. That same amount of space now only covers three frets, so you really have to expand and open up to do that. So, if you're having some issues at first strengthening those fingers, especially the, the fourth finger, the pinky finger, start a little bit higher up. It doesn't have to be the ninth fret. Maybe start at the seventh fret, the sixth fret, something like that. Something that's a little bit more attainable, so you don't feel like you're stretching way out here. I mean, look at the distance, distance between those two fingers. That's quite a stretch I've got going there. So, there's no need to start with that. You work your way up to that, if you will. So that's my suggestion, but definitely be doing a lot of exercises with that pinky finger because that's your weakest finger. This finger, the third finger, you could do that all day. Third, sec, first and second fingers, you could, you, even if you hit it incorrectly, it's still going to sound good. But you really want to make sure that that pinky's strong. Notice how each time that I'm hammering on with all these fingers, that the knuckles are staying bent inward like this, like I'm going to be throwing a knuckleball. You never want to have your fingers pressing like this and doing that sort of thing. That's, that's just going to put you in a bad position. And plus it also has you touching other strings. The only time you're going to do something like this is if you're doing some sort of bar chord. You know, most of the time we bar with the first finger. Sometimes you bar with the second or third and there's that very rare occasion where you bar <laughs> with the fourth finger, like in the, the uh, Prelude in D minor by Johann Sebastian Bach. That part right there is one of the, uh, the measures in there. So, really start to develop that pinky finger, do some hammer-ons, and the last little tip for this, guys, is make sure that your hammer-ons, when you're just practicing them and isolating them, make sure that the rhythm is even. It's very, it's a lot easier to go to get that momentum, but we want to keep the sound even. We want to go kind of think of it like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that sort of thing, because that'll give you a nice even sound, but it also will prove 
whether or not your hammer on is is good because you can use the momentum at any time and you can get a decent sound but if you're keeping it purely strict metronomically then you know you've got it taken care of so hopefully that helped you guys out today happy practicing thanks so much for watching this video I really appreciate it if you haven't done it already click the like button click subscribe hit the bell for notifications so every time I drop a new video you know exactly when it comes out Please feel free to share this with all of your friends. I would really appreciate it to help me get my name out there. And again, guys, thanks so much, and I look forward to seeing you in the next Magical Musical Moment. And if you're interested in taking your guitar playing to the next level, and you want to take private lessons, please feel free to visit my website, www.classicalchris.com. Drop me an email, and I would be glad to work with you one-on-one. -on -one.